Hi, we're Derek and Jenna. We started our homesteading journey in 2011 with five small children, a garden, and a few chicks. Since then, we've added three more kids and a whole lot of animals. We're currently renting 37 acres in the Blue Ridge Mountains where we raise grass-fed beef, grass-fed dairy, pastured poultry and pork, free-range eggs, and a large garden. We also have a couple pet goats, several barn cats, and a beagle. We're working on moving from growing just our own food to selling locally. We homeschool our children and are a full-time family with hopes and goals of farming for a living. We would love to welcome you all to follow our family on our journey. Hey y'all. Hey. We're going to do a quick video on how to set up a trick chick breeder. Yay. Get yes. ready for your baby chickens. We're going to show you what we do and then tell you some other options. But we just thought it's getting to be that time of year where people are starting to get chickens or will be really soon. And so this will kind of help you. If you've never had chickens before, help you get ready for them. And if you have, you might get a new idea because we do things a little differently yes. than we used to do them. So, um, and this, this works really well. Yeah, I good. mean, this is the best way that we found. So Yeah, we really um, like doing it this way. Yeah. So. Anyway, we have um, a giant brooder because we do a lot of chickens. We do a lot of meat birds. So sometimes we'll have 100 chickens, baby chicks in here. Right now we're getting ready to get 40 something chicks. So we, um, you don't need something this big. You can do something half the size. You can even use a tote. If you're only getting half a dozen or a dozen, dozen chickens, those totes you can get at Walmart or wherever, pots yeah. of totes, work perfect. <clears throat> so we're going to show you what we have and also tell you, you know, what you can do with something that's not quite as big of a right. scale. So yeah, the first thing you want is something to keep your chicks in, which a brooder. Yeah. In our case is this four by eight brooder. Um, the next thing you need to figure out is what you want to use for bedding. Um, some people use sawdust, some people use wood chips. <laughs> so, uh, some people use sawdust, some people use wood chips. Some people have used straw. We don't suggest straw or hay because chicks' legs are frail and they just don't, they can get caught and twisted up in there and it doesn't, they don't do well with the straw. Right. I, in my, my personal opinion. So, yes. what was suggested to us by some people that we, that they have a hatchery was peat moss. We tried it and we probably will never use anything other than peat moss from now if on. If we can help it. <laughs> because it works so much better. It lasts like five times longer than wood chips. You can take it out and put it in like an old feed sack to save for when you need or it for bag, gardening whatever, or a trash bag tote. or whatever. Or, or in your compost pile. Or you can put it straight on your garden because yeah. it doesn't have to compost. It's peat moss. Yeah. So it works great. The amount of chicken manure that's in it from the baby chicks isn't going to be enough to burn anything. So there's a lot of nitrogen, so you want to be careful with um, like chicken manure. But with baby chicks, you can put it straight on your yeah. garden. So we just do about a uh, thin layer. So yeah, we're probably probably maybe two inches thick. And mm -hmm. uh, let me get this more open. Mm -hmm. It's probably going to take about half a bag, don't you think, Emma? I think so. It spreads out. They're pretty compact when you buy the peat moss, and it's not super expensive. Um, it's definitely more cost effective than buying a bunch of wood chips. Yeah. Which is what we've done in the past. So that's a half a bag for this four by eight brooder. Let's see how much it, well, maybe a little more than half a bag now. <laughs> but it breaks up a lot and fluffs up. And the chicks love to get in this stuff and scratch. Now, if you're gonna have a brooder outdoors, especially if it's cooler weather, you're gonna wanna do this in advance and get your heat, if you're using heat lights, get your heat on it because um, since this is a lot like dirt, it's cold when you first get out of the bag. So you don't wanna put chicks straight on something that's really cold that will pull the heat out of their body and could um, make them get sick or even kill them. So yeah, what we do we is we get it spread out and we go ahead and, and we'll show you in a minute, we're gonna put our heat on it so that we're getting our chicks tomorrow. So by the time our chicks get here, this is nice and warm and cozy and ready for them. Yep. Um, if you can do it indoors, again, you want to bring your, or we could have just brought the bag inside the house and let it warm up. Before we brought it out of here, that would have worked too. But um, you'll want to put have it in your house if you're going to do your chickens inside. Just You just want it to be nice and warm so they don't get um, cold. I guess we're going to need more than Yeah, we're going to need more. I don't know. Usually it seemed like a half a bag in the summer was working, but it might be a, um, maybe not. <laughs> it might be a different brand too. But it might have been a bigger bag than last year. I can't remember. Possibly. But I think it's a different brand. So we're going to use a whole bag. Okay. Which still, it's like 14 bucks. And then with 40 some chicks in it, this will probably last a couple of weeks. Yeah. Like and, the, uh, the uh, pine, <laughs> okay. pine shavings are less expensive per bag, but you're gonna find that you have to change them often because yeah. they start to stink and get really icky real fast because they just don't absorb as much as this does. Yep. Yeah, the peat moss is super dry and it tends to dry out quicker when it does get wet. 
So another tip thing that we've learned is if you have something that you can set on top of the bedding that's a little bit taller to keep your water up off of the bedding, the water will stay cleaner for a lot longer. Uh, we just use these old landscape blocks. They were, I, had, I got paid to haul them off from a job site and uh, so I have a bunch of them. And they just, it's like an inch and a half tall. You can use and a block just, of wood though. Yeah, I mean, block of wood. We just use them because we have them. Because we have them. We set it in here and we'll set the waterer, which is over here. And we're not going to put our water in here today because it's just too cold. We'll probably do that tomorrow. We'll keep the water in the house. We'll show you that in a minute. But uh, the water goes together. And we set it on that and that way it's elevated. Because the little chicks, they'll get in here and be scratching around and being all crazy and they'll fill this the trough up with dirt and, and bedding, which is uh, just makes a mess. You gotta clean the water a lot more often. Okay, so for us, since we do so many chickens at a time, we use a one gallon waterer at least. Mm -hmm. um, for our bigger chickens, we have up to like five gallon waterers. Uh, it's just what you need. So you can also get, um, this is dirty because it's been outside and it's kind of broken now. <laughs> But these, you can just hook a regular mouth mason jar on these with water, and they're great for if you're doing an indoor brooder with a small space. Um, and a lot of people will use these. They will also put little, those smooth little rocks you get for like aquariums and stuff in here just to keep the chicks from getting in the water and getting all wet or um, possibly drowning or anything like that. But this is another option for a water. For water, yeah. Or if you, and you can put a quart or you can put a half gallon mason jar on that and it works. And we have what we call um, well, I guess Justin Rhodes started it. Magic Water? I think that's who started it. Um, my friend Courtney over at Highway Homestead makes it, and I got the recipe from her. And um, it's just water and apple cider vinegar, and we actually use raw sugar. You can use honey, but we didn't have any honey, so we put raw sugar in here and garlic. And um, the I'll link her video below so that you can go watch her video on how she makes it because yeah. um, I don't have the exact recipe in my head. But anyway, <laughs> we have a gallon of this. This is half a gallon. We have a gallon that's made up ready to go for tomorrow. So we're going to take it back in the house so it doesn't freeze because it's really cold out here. <laughs> but tomorrow when we get home with the chicks, we'll go ahead and fill that water up with this so the chicks have good water. And this just gives them a little bit of an electrolyte boost and it's really, really good for their immune system. It's got the vinegar and the garlic and all that's going to help their immune system and also help keep them warm so that's going to be how we take care of their water that's what we use for water for feed we use soy free non-gmo corn free chick starter feed and uh i'm gonna try not to set this in there i don't know if you'll be able to see let me come over there yeah Good job, so we just put the feed put as much of it as you can in the feeder and uh you want to keep especially with layers all the feed they can eat you basically just free feed them we'll close that over and it snaps shut keeps it from getting in it and just making a bigger mess scratching it, it all out yeah it's rounded on the top they tend to not be able to roost on it which is good because they roost on it and they poop in it yes exactly so we'll set this over here and that way it's easier for us to see how much feed they have well the water will go right there we'll know how much water they have by looking in and i guess i'll show you why because like you might hand me that lid this lid right here for our particular breeder design yes this, is how. this lid is obviously harder to you can't see you just got a couple holes and these are where the heat lamps go and then the this just gives them more ventilation and it goes in that's how that works so we got the feed in the water here where we can keep an eye on it easy we don't have to open them up to look at them or check their feed and water i do have to put something here i we had a little access panel there because I've changed the design of this brooder several times over the course of the like, two summers we've used it. Um, just making it easier to more functional, but do have to get something for there. I'll get that tomorrow before we put them in here. And All right, we have our heat lamp. It's working nice, nice and warm. warm. And uh, we're, we have two of the heat lamps, but we don't have bulbs. two bulbs right now. So uh, tomorrow we'll get more bulbs when we go pick up our chicks. But I am going to stick this heat lamp right here for tonight. And if you can see, with this brooder, we have um, metal wire over the holes. Hardware cloth. Hardware cloth. Yeah. And we have a hole there. Ah! And we, 
<laughs> Goldilocks is talking to us. And we have a hole there that these safely fit on. Um, yeah. We realize we, these lights can be a fire hazard, so use them with caution. I know people who will not use them no matter what because they feel like they're not safe. Um, we use them. A lot of people use them. It's just we make sure that we're being safe with them. Uh, so we are going to have two of those, but right now we only have one. So we just put it like that. Um, sometimes, because this is all the mat, the wire here, the hardware clock, and we will put them over here on this, so we really need more. But, um, since that side has a lid, we'll put two over there. Yeah. If you're using them in the house, again, you just want to be really careful. They do have clips. Um, we've used them where we clip them onto chickens back in the bucket of feeder. Yeah, y'all take that feed out. Close onto a tote, and we just make sure that they're really secure and we're watching you know to make sure that nothing happens you can purchase a heat plate they're um they sell them in different sizes they're pricier but they're not a fire hazard they plug in and the chickens can just get under them as needed and they sell them in different sizes we actually have one they don't do well out here with the number of chickens we have um, but we've used it in the house and we have just a few chickens that we're having in the house yep so there's um, a cat in the brooder. Wow. Yeah. They'll probably sleep in there tonight under these heat lamps. They're going to be nice and yep. toasty. But that's pretty simple. That's all you need for your chickens. You need a heat source because chicks need to be kept when you first get them for the first week between 95 and 100 degrees. Now, the, the temperature of the whole brooder doesn't have to stay that hot the entire time. If you provide them with an area and a heat lamp, when they get cold, they're going to go under the yep. heat. When they get hot, if they're panting, it's too hot. Right. So we, we just try to keep a watch on their behavior. But with this so much space, we don't have an issue. In the house, with a smaller brooder, you're going to want to watch that. And we usually buy a thermometer. You can buy them really cheap, just a couple bucks at the hardware store or at the farm store. And you'll keep that in there and just keep a watch. And you'll back the temperature down every week for a couple of weeks until they're at about 70 to 75 degrees. Now, in the wintertime, if you get chickens like we do, you're not going to take the heat away for a lot longer because it's not that warm outside yet. If you yeah. get your chickens in the spring and you keep them at the warmer temperatures for a couple weeks, you should be good to go. So um, you might find that if you have colder nights, you'll want to turn the heat on at night, but not during the day. But I think that's it. And then yeah. have your feed. It's very important just to give them chick starter when they're babies. They need um, everything that's in that and the proper protein and everything. And the crumbles, of course, because they're too little to eat the bigger feed and give them good clean water. And we suggest giving them magic water in the beginning at least, if not the whole time, because um, that's just going to help keep their immune systems boosted. They do have options like medicated feed. We don't choose to use medicated feed. Um, that's something that we say, you know, look into it, research it, and decide what you want to do. But some people do medicate feed to start out with and you know just really research your options with setting it for chickens is easy they need food water and heat and clean bedding and that's yep. pretty much it so we hope that you guys enjoyed this and you learned something and you're ready to get baby chickens because baby chickens are awesome <laughs> i get really excited about baby yes chickens. you do so we're glad that you are here hanging out with us and if you're not already subscribed to our channel please go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will get notified when we upload videos and if you hit that thumbs up it lets youtube know that you enjoyed this video we really appreciate y'all and we will catch you guys on the next one